Chapter 3, Section 4 Resources Activities and processes are executed by people. We need to express that certain people are responsible for certain tasks. Have a look at our order to cash example. Here we have two departments involved, the sales department and the warehouse and distribution department. We also might want to express that the ERP module is relevant in order to support the warehouse and distribution department. What does BPMN offer? BPMN has so-called pools and lanes to express the responsibility of different resources. A pool is a box into which we can place activities. An activity that is in a pool has the meaning that the corresponding entity associated with the pool is responsible for it. At stages, we also want to express that different organizational entities make up a pool. We can use lanes to subdivide the pools. In this way, we, for example, can express that a large department is subdivided into subunits. If we apply this idea to our order to cash process, we arrive at something that looks like this. There's a seller organization, and the seller organization is subdivided into a sales and a warehouse and distribution department. The warehouse and distribution department is subdivided into warehouse staff and the ERP system. By placing the BPMN activities and events into these pools and lanes, we can express responsibilities. We observe that the purchase order is received by the ERP system, which automatically does a check of stock availability. The sales department then takes over and determines if the items are in stock. If so, they confirm the order and they emit an invoice and they notify the warehouse staff to ship the goods. The order is then archived and fulfilled. The sales department is also responsible for rejecting orders. We can clearly see who is responsible for which activity here. A pool is used to represent an organizational entity. If there are different organizations interacting with each other, we usually use separate pools for representing them. The information that is exchanged between these is represented using message flow arcs. You see an example here on the left hand side bottom. There is one entity that is called pool 1. A sending activity leads to a message flow that is exchanged with pool number 2. The entity that is associated with pool 2 may reply to this. This may be also done without having a particular response later. We see here that we can represent pool number 2 in different ways. We may actually show explicitly also activities in pool number 2 when we know them. A 
A usual pattern is that processes are often triggered by our customers or partners sending orders to us. This can be nicely shown with a start message event. A start message event triggers the process on our side. And showing who is triggering this can be done with a message flow. This means that we can now extend our order to cash process with an external customer or party. Let's start with the customer. The customer is the one that places an order. This starts the execution of the process on our part. At different stages we come back to the customer. For instance, we sent an order confirmation or a rejection. We also ship the goods to the customer and the corresponding shipping notice. The invoice is sent to the customer and then the order completes. Now let's look at some rules. We cannot just connect anything how we want. There are some connections of message flow that are explicitly allowed because they make sense. Some of them are explicitly forbidden. Let's have a look. We have to distinguish sequence flow and message flow. Sequence flow is how we connect activities inside a pool. This means we are not allowed to connect activities across different pools with message flows. This is why we have message flows available. Message flows are meant to be used when activities across different pools interact. The same line of reasoning applies when we want to connect activities in a pool. We have to use sequence flows for this. But we are not allowed to use message flows inside a pool. In this way, sequence flow and message flow have a clear meaning. Message flow is used for information exchange between independent parties. These independent parties are shown as separate pools. Inside one pool, activities are connected with sequence flow. Finally, we have to ask ourselves, what is the impact of the message flows that we draw on the activity? Here you see a small example. There is an activity in pool 1 and that activity is connected with message flows from pool number 2. We see there is an ingoing message flow and an outgoing message flow. The meaning of these is that the activity can only start when the message from the incoming message flow is received. That means the activity has to wait for message B to arrive. Only then the activity can be executed and activity A is provided as an outcome.